Good morning and welcome to our online service. This is Life Center Bible Church. We give God praise today for another beautiful day that He has made. We will rejoice and we will be glad in Him. Please let's lift up our voices wherever you are. Join us to bless His name. Musiki Dadusha Taba Baba We give you praise. We worship you. The God of all flesh, we worship you. The giver of life, we worship you. Our healer, our sanctifier, our redeemer, we worship you this morning. We reverence you, Baba God. We revere you, Jehovah. Masula Gadi Anzati Baba Baba. The great and the mighty God, the one who chose to dwell in us. Masukele Baba Baba. You are great. You are great to be praised. You are a good God. It doesn't matter what we see, what we feel, what we hear. You still remain a good God. You are good. And your mercy is enduring forever. Lift up your voices wherever you are and just worship. Lift up your voices. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Oh, I sing praises to your name. Oh, Oh, Lord. 
you will always behave your belief. And that is why it's very important to believe right. If you believe wrong, you will behave wrong and you will get the wrong results. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christianity, when one becomes born again, is supposed to lift you to a harder pedestal of living and not bring you down. Christ in you is the hope of glory, not shame. Hope of glory, not poverty. Hope of glory, not religion. Christianity is meant to make you go above ordinary human living and tap into the abilities of God that is inside of you. The greatest power that can ever be ever demonstrated on earth lives on your inside. We need to constantly remind ourselves of this fact and then walk in it. Hallelujah. If we turn Christianity to religion, something we do to please people, we will not act. We will not behave like that. And when there's no action to our beliefs, when there is no action, all what people will be saying will be talk, 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 and no results. Life honors results. Hallelujah. Amen. What, did, what did I just say now? Life Life honors honors results. Results. Please, be careful of pleasing habits, pleasing people, and whatever, whatever. Get pleasing results. Focus on getting pleasing results because that is what God is more honored about. This time around, I'll be speaking to you more from the strategies of the Let's see Psalm 34. Glory to God. Are we together? Yes, sir. Let's read together. I will, so, I will bless the Lord, Lord at, all at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof. And be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. Sorry, if your Bible is yours, the one that you are reading from at home, please underline that word, delivered me from all my fears. Let's go to verse 5. They looked unto him, him and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all his troubles. You can underline that too. Let's go verse 7. The angel of the Lord encamped around about them that feared him, and delivered them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is man that trusted in him. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no one to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Come, ye children, hearken unto me, I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that desireth life? And love it many days, that he may see good. Keep your tongue from evil, and your lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil, and do good. Seek peace, and pursue it. 15. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil. To cut off the remembrance of them from the heart. The righteous cried, and the Lord hearing, and delivered them out of all their troubles. Underline that word again. Out of all their troubles. 18. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as are be of contrite spirit. 19. Many, Many are, are the afflictions of the righteous, the righteous but the Lord, Lord delivereth him out of them all. again out of them all. Verse 20. He, he keepeth all on his bones, and not, not one of them is broken. Evil, evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. The, the Lord redeem the soul of his servants, and none of them shall trust in him shall be desolate. If your Bible is yours again, underline that word. Hallelujah, verse 22. Glory to God. This chapter is full of a lot of gems. 
a lot of strategies, a lot of things that David used in his lifetime that worked for him. And I want you to notice something from verse, of course from verse 1, verse 4. The Lord delivered him out from all my fears. I saw the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. That means it's possible to be delivered from all your fears. All your fears. Everybody listen to me. It's possible to be delivered from all your fears. Whatever that fear is. You understand? Especially rampaging the whole uh, country, worldwide, economy, uh, the COVID thing. Every fear that you might entertain from <coughs> COVID or in this present situation, it's possible to be delivered from it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, one of the principles of life is this. In order to defeat a thing, you must first of all be, be delivered or de de be delivered from its fear. Because fear of it alone will cripple you from making movement, mm -hmm. from making any strategy mm -hmm. to do it. So if you want to do anything, any opponent, any opposition, deliverance from its fear first is, a, is one thing. Now, look at verse 5. Say they looked unto him, that is God, and were lighting, and their faces were not ashamed. Our God is a delivering God. Amen. Our God is a God of deliverance from anything. No matter what trouble you are going through right now, no matter what the economy has caused for you, you've not been able to go to work, you've, not, uh, you've been sick all day, no matter what you are going through, even if it is cancer, the Bible said they looked unto him and they were lighting. And their faces were not put, and they were not ashamed. When you trust God for your situation, I mean God, the creator of heaven and earth, that Jesus came to reveal to us, you will not be put to shame. It's guaranteed. Whosoever looked unto him will never be put to shame. Whosoever puts his trust, Romans chapter 10 and verse 11, whosoever shall put his trust in him will never be put to shame. Whether you go to church, you don't go to church, whether you've missed it in life, whether you've missed mistake or not, no matter what your past is, if you will put your trust in the Lord, you will never be put to shame. Amen. But today, I want to talk to you about something big. And it's about deliverance from all fears. All fears. Saving out of all his troubles. Some people think in life, you just have to live in fear, you just have to live in a part of trouble or some trouble or the other. No. Yeah, it might be a war zone. It might be a war zone, but we wrestle not with flesh and blood. Are you with me? And it's possible to be delivered from all your troubles. As a matter of fact, you have been delivered from all your troubles. It's just that you don't know. Look, life happens in two phases. First of all, on the inside, and then on the outside. We are a product of what we see outside. Everything starts from inside first. If you are not delivered on the inside, you cannot be delivered on the outside. You understand? Many of what we are struggling and we are afraid of, all we need to do is to sit down and work on our inside, on our inner man, on our beliefs, on what we are, the way we are thinking, and then we will see changes in the outside world. Oh. You see, God is just a, is such a good God that David is telling uh, people, he said, come and taste. Taste. That means I'm giving you, I'm giving you God. Taste and see that God is good. He said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. That is all what we need, brethren. Whether you're at home, whatever your situation is right now, I want to let you know that your hope is only in God. What is fear? Because this is what it is what is killing people. Fear means being afraid. Being afraid of anything. Diseases, future, meeting bills, how your children will turn out, your life, your body, answers to your prayer. Being afraid. You understand me? And it's a negative expectation. Fear is a force that works like faith. 
like trust in the Lord. Your fears will always draw negative things to you. Those things, just like Job in chapter 3. He said, that which he feared most has come to him. You understand me? Look, that which you fear most will always come to you. And it's possible to be delivered from all your fears. Oh, let's go back to this Psalm 35. I'm excited. Whenever you read the Bible, you see good news from it. Are you getting me? And that's why we should always and constantly be dwelling on the Bible. You will always find solutions to all your problems in life. You see, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. He is humble shall hear of and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. The psalmist says he will always bless the Lord. One of the strategies that he used in the fear of anything, including the bear, the lion, and uh, Goliath, thank you. He says he will always bless the Lord. What are you saying constantly? Are you constantly whining? Are you constantly complaining? Are you constantly talking about how painful the cancer is? Or how your blood pressure is? How you cannot sleep yesterday? The headache, the pounding headache. <laughs> is that what you are always focusing on? Or the ability of God? The devil will always want to distract you and make you look at the problems of life, your fears in life. That is what the devil will always want you to be because your focus will always bring results. Are you with me? When you focus on what the enemy is doing, you will get what he will, he will have opportunity to focus, land problems in your, in, on you. But when you focus on the ability of God, on the power of God, each and every one of us, do you know, like you told me, you say we say it, but we don't believe it. You, you, you get what I'm saying? Many of us believe God is powerful, but because we are not constantly talking about him, we are not talking about how majestic, how big, how his power can deliver from anything, we may not be realizing it. We don't believe it. What we say eventually enters our heart. It works on our heart to, on what we believe, and that is what we will get. You understand? When you, be, when you magnify God and not COVID, he says, I will continually magnify the Lord. I will make him big. You see, literally, you can't make God bigger than he is, but to your consciousness, his ability can be made bigger. When you magnify the Lord, you magnify his deliverance. You, when you praise the Lord, you magnify his ability to provide, to deliver, to do anything for you, to heal you. You understand me? COVID is nothing. You understand me? COVID-19, COVID what? Coronavirus, anytime it even comes, if another one comes in 20 or 21, you understand me? Uh, or the pandemic, or it, it's nothing. But God is everything. He's all-powerful. I wish people could understand and know God more. Because that is what we need. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me just say this. You see, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. All your fears, it's possible for you to be delivered from it. All your fears. Is a fear of examination you want to do? Is a fear of people? Is a fear to go out? Fear that uh, you will not make it in life? No. There are so many reasons, which is, maybe that's where I will stop today. But uh, why is it that we should not fear? <laughs> Why, why should we not fear? Number one, we need not fear because God said, fear not. Yes. Look, take your Bible, check your concordance, and Google fear not. You will see a lot that comes. When God wants to come, use a man, or when God is dealing with a man, he will tell all of them, Abraham, fear not. I'm your great reward. Um, Joseph, Moses, said, fear not. The assignments God will give you in life are always bigger than you. And they could look intimidating. But God, and I repeat, God will, is with you. Amen. That's another reason why not to fear. Amen. Because it's in you. You see, fear is the strategy that the enemy uses to make you useless in the hand of God. Fear is, the, is a strategy. It's a weapon. 
that the enemy uses to make you useless in life. Are you with me? God said so, fear not. And because God said, fear not, we need not fear. We need not fear. That is a reason not to fear. Because God said so. God told Moses, don't fear. God told Abraham, don't fear. God told Joseph, don't fear. Even Jesus himself said, fear not. I've overcome the world. Brethren out there, I'm giving you good news this morning. Fear not. Please let me tell your neighbors or people around you, say fear not. Fear, fear not. not. Say it like five times. Fear, fear not. not. That's only once. Fear, fear not. not. Fear, 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 fear not. not. Oh, fear, fear not. not. Fear, fear not. You know, fear one not. of the reasons why, number one reason is because God said don't fear. Number two is because fear is from the devil. Analyze it in any area of life. You see, your, the circumstances of your life, where you are, might be, is, they are different from where I am in life. But let me tell you everything. Every form of fear is from the devil. Why? 2 Timothy chapter 1 in verse 7 says, We have not been given a spirit of fear. We have not been given the spirit of fear. All forms of fear, trepidation, uh, being afraid, uh, anxiety, worry, restlessness, it's from the devil. And you see a lot of it, it's palpable in the air outside now. Many people don't even go out because of this quarantine, COVID thing, but yet they are still afraid in their bedroom. Afraid of one thing or the other, things that they have not seen. Nobody has seen coronavirus before. <laughs> and yet, I mean, don't let me use that word, people that are using microscope might isolate and detect it, but ordinary people, they are yet they fear it like anything. And they behave correspondingly with the mask, with all those things. You see, the kind of action that we take for such belief, if we would take it with the word of God, we would get amazing results in our life. So God says so, and because fear is from the devil, we need not fear. Again, fear brings bondage. But can you Google the word bondage? Fear binds you. Are you with me? Look at uh, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 15. Look at what God says here. Let's quickly turn to that. You will see why in the lifetime of so many people, they achieve so little. Because of fear. One fear or the other, what people will say, what my in-law will say, what my father will say, what my wife will say, uh, what my friends will say, what would they think of you? Whatever they think, whatever they say, or what so, 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 so said. You understand? What matters most in your life is what God said, and not fear that people bring into your life. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 15, what did he say? Look at it. He said, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subjects to bondage. <clears throat> fear of death. Fear brings, fear brings bondage. And uh, I just want to say something briefly along this line. Do you know that death does not mean that you will not you will cease living? Especially old people that are getting to the end of their life. Fear, I mean. If you are afraid, you are dying before death. Death is something that every human being, every mortal will go through. And it means separation from the body. It's not something to be afraid of, but something to be prepared for. It's not something to be afraid of, to be scared of, but something to be prepared for. But fear will always bring bondage. See, it will bind you. It will not allow you to take necessary action that will glorify God in your life. Think about it. Fear is of the devil. Any form it comes from. Why you should not fear? Again, fear cripples you. Studies have shown that life results come from taking action. Are you with me? But when you are afraid, you will not be able to take the massive action that will give you results in life. You will not be able to study. You will not be able to go out and get what you need to do. You will not even be able to talk to people that have or bring the circumstances that will bring results into your life. And let me tell you something, brethren. Don't wait to give reasons why you cannot do things, why you are not able to get things. We are not to follow people that give explanation for failure. 
We are to follow them that get results. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It could be hard, but it's possible. Yes. It could be hard, but it's possible. And don't forget, we wrestle not with flesh and blood. You understand me? Most of the battles you will fight inside in life are inside your mind, mm -hmm. inside your thinking. That is the battleground. And if you can defeat the devil there, you will defeat it naturally in life with action. Mm -hmm. Fear cripples. Fear cripples people. You understand me? <coughs> and, and have you seen in life where small, small things that does, does not uh, have a chance of dealing with you started troubling you? Oh, there's a saying in my language that when, when big things are over you, then small, small things will be insulting you. Small, small issues of life will be insulting you. Things that need not bother you in any situation. Don't be afraid. In any situation, don't be afraid. Don't panic. Don't yield to fear. What I'm teaching you today will help defeat any opponent in life. Do you know that the enemy one of the reasons why we need not be afraid in life is because the real enemy has been defeated. Amen. The real enemy is the devil. He has been defeated. Amen. He has been paralyzed. He cannot do anything. But he had wives. He had tricks. And one of the tricks that he uses is pressure. Everybody say pressure. Oh, my. The overwhelming pressure of the deadline. What happens if I cannot do it? What happens if I don't pay the money? What happens if my son, my daughter cannot uh, pay the school fees on that day? What happens? What happens? What happens? What happens? You will not fail. Amen. God will see to it that circumstances of life works for you. Amen. I've been there in life. When moving forward, take, taking a step or two, my means I collapse or die of Faint. As a matter of fact, all energy in my body had fainted. I mean, were drained. My knees were knocking. And yet I dared. And today I'm still alive. When you dare to follow the word of God, when you dare to praise God, when you dare to talk about the goodness of God in all situations of life, you will see amazing results in your life. You will see amazing results in your life. The enemy, the enemy had been defeated. The enemy had been defeated. He will bring pressures. He will tell you you cannot match up to other people. He will tell you you cannot do it. You cannot. Look. Learn to answer, to speak to situations and say, God said. Just like Jesus do. The reasons why you should not fear today that I've given you is about five or six. And I want to just go over it. You see, uh, God said so. We don't have the spirit of fear, number two. And number three is because fear brings bondage. Number four, fear cripples you. You understand? Number five is because the enemy that you are dealing with had been defeated. Honestly speaking, you may not know, but if you will take time to meditate on this, to ruminate on this, and remind yourself that Christ in me, the hope of glory, get ready, Christ in me, the hope of glory, you remind yourself constantly that God lives inside of you. You will see that you are able to handle all situations of life. There is nothing that can defeat you. You are more equipped to overcome situations and circumstances of life. What will you do if you cannot fail? What will you do post-COVID era if you cannot fail? Begin right now. Write it down. Get ready to do it. Don't forget, Christ in you, the hope of glory. You are more powerful. 